Welcome, welcome to Stretch Books. They are the books that will help you to discover deeper purpose and master higher productivity. This is Stretch Books 003, the third episode, and we are talking about grit, passion, and perseverance by Angela Duckworth. I have five points to go along with this book, and then my own point, my own thought about grit from a Christian perspective. Number one, clearly seeing the simple steps to getting somewhere increases grit. And Angela talks about Mark Spitz. And before Michael Phelps came along, Mark Spitz was the man when it comes to swimming. He had won seven gold medals and people looked at him like a fish in water. The other swimmers revered him as having amazing natural ability and natural talent. And that onus kind of followed Mark around, right? That he was all about natural ability and natural talent. And he said himself that people didn't see the mundane day-to-day -day tasks, the grit that he put into becoming that kind of swimmer that could win seven medals. And Angela makes the point that we have this natural tendency within humanity to want to see, and even Nietzsche, the, the German philosopher, says that we have this tendency to want to see our, I know I'm going to butcher this, but basically want to see our artistry and talent as if it's just popped out of the ground. And I find that really interesting because I really like to see the grit and the sweat and some visualization of that to show that it took hard work to get where that person is. It's very inspiring to me. But what Angela is saying, that humanity as a whole doesn't like to see that, when somebody seems superhuman and has that kind of ability, that we tend to like to see them as freaks and as just insanely gifted and special because if we believe that, that means that we don't have to grow, right? If there's something inherently special and different and unique about them compared to me, then I don't even have to try. So why should I try? If we believed that we were on a level playing field, then that would require us to get up off the couch and do something, right? So what she's saying, if you want to have grit, you need to be able to see that everyone took concrete steps that got them where they wanted to go that has exceptional talent in an area and you can do the same. And so you will have more grit if you get really clear about what those steps are that are quantifiable that'll help you move forward. Number two, having a clear overarching why or goal increases grit. Um, Angela Duckworth tells this story about Warren Buffett that he sees his pilot getting ready going through the pre-takeoff checklist and Warren says to the pilot, hey, I'm sure you don't want to spend your entire life being my pilot. What are the goals and aspirations that you have for yourself? And the pilot says, well, yeah, you know, I do have several goals and aspirations. And he said, do you mind if I ask you what they are? The pilot says he has no problem with that. So he says, do me a favor, write down a list of your 25 top goals, the 25 things that you're most passionate about, that you most want to achieve in your lifetime. And so the pilot does that. And then he says, okay, step two, circle the five things that you're most passionate about and that you most want to achieve. Just circle the top five. And so the pilot does this. And as I'm reading this, I'm thinking, okay, this sounds pretty par for the course for goal setting, but the magic comes in at step three. And he says, step three, take the other 20 things on your list, the things that you did not circle, frame those, and I want you to avoid them like the plague because those are the things that are going to keep you from achieving your dreams. And I thought, how much clarity and wisdom and insight is there into that, that it's the things that you somewhat enjoy that are going to keep you from really following your passion and succeeding. So having a clear overarching why or goal increases grit. If this is something that you really want to expand on more for yourself, 
I have read tons of books on purpose and why. The best, the, the de facto best on purpose and why in my mind, secular books, is Start With Why by Simon Sinek. It helps you to really look at your life and examine yourself to see what your why truly has always been, whether you followed it or not. Excellent book, but what Angela is saying is that the people who have a stronger sense of why, that overarching why, those are the people that are going to have more grit. Number three, if you are more optimistic, you will have more grit. And she talks about this experiment, which I don't condone. It was done in like the 1960s, where these dogs were given electric shocks. And you had two different groups of dogs, and it was their back paws that were shocked. The first set of dogs could push their nose against the end of their cage, and that push would make the electric stock shock stop. The second set of dogs would receive those electric shocks and there was nothing they could do to stop the shock and they would eventually just lay down in their cages and whimper until the shocks would stop. So second experiment, you take that same two sets of dogs and you give them an opening that's just high enough for them to really reach and jump out of the cage. The first set of dogs that had the ability to stop the shocks, as soon as those shocks begin, almost 100% of the time, almost immediately jumped out of the cage. And the second group of dogs, the dogs that were not able to stop their shock, almost 100% of the time just laid there and whimpered and did not try to jump out of their cage. And the point that she's trying to make is when we develop a pessimistic mentality about life or about what we're capable of, it decreases grit because grit is the stuff you need to be able to move forward and get things done. And if you don't believe you can move forward and get things done, you don't ever work that muscle. It also makes me think of the old story of the elephant you see at the circus that is a two ton, 10 ton elephant that is tied to a wood stake to a rope in the ground that it could easily just lift its leg and pop out. It doesn't, it never moves. And the reason for that is because as a baby, that same elephant had a huge iron stake pummeled into the ground with this giant heavy chain attached to its collar. And for weeks it would struggle and strive and attempt to get out of this chain but realized finally that it was defeated and couldn't do it for the rest of that elephant's life. It never forgets that limiting belief and it always has trouble. It always has the obstacle that it can't move forward. Same concept. It's the optimistic people, the people who have evaluated and who have said, I can do it globally that are more, that display more grit. Number four, if you have a growth mindset, you will have more grit. Um, there is a book by Carol Dweck, and it is a seminal book on success psychology. It's one of my favorite books. It's called Mindset, The New Psychology of Success by Carol Dweck. This book gets into the difference between having a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. More specifically, the fixed mindset is the mindset of the person who believes that they can make incremental changes, that it's possible to make these little changes, but your faculties, the things that allow you to do things really don't change much over your lifetime. Your identity doesn't change much over your lifetime. The person with the extreme growth mindset is the person that believes that their identity is mercurial, that they're able to change and become more, that Things can change throughout life and that they will change greatly throughout life. As I started this book, believing I was an optimistic person, I believed I had a growth mindset. And one of the reasons that this book is so important to me is because I realized throughout it that I had a fixed mindset. I'm literally reading the explanations of how you know if you have a growth mindset. And I keep shaking my head thinking, oh my gosh, like... I'm a fixed mindset individual. And so that realization has led me on a journey to become more of a growth mindset person. 
and has made a huge impact on my life. And so what Angela Duckworth is saying, and she references Carol Dweck and a lot of the studies that went into that book, she's saying that in order to have grit, that you have to have that growth mindset, that people with a growth mindset have more grit because even if they don't believe they have the ability to do what they need to do, they believe they can get it. They can get the resources and move forward. And this brings us to point number five. And this is my own personal point as a Christian that's really foundational to me. And I really chalk it up to so many points about Christianity that we have so many benefits as Christians that everyone else else could have access to benefits not only for the next life but for this life and this is one of them and this is number number five if you have faith in God and if you lean on Christ if you lean on him then you will have more grit and I only put it as number five because it's my own point I put it at the very top it's foundational to me And I think of the verse that everybody knows from Isaiah chapter 40, 40, 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. So out of all of these things you can do to have a growth mindset, and I believe this is an excellent book for that, for the psychology of that, the thing that you really need is to have a God that loves you, that you can lean on, that will give you that spiritual strength, that supernatural strength that can only come from him. And if you're living for him, then he's going to give you the power to be able to continually move forward when things are tough. So that's their four points and my one point. I hope you enjoyed that stretch book. Have a great day today. And just remember that this day is a gift. So do two things with it. Be both purposeful and productive with it. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you next time.